really curious is Bart Ehrman, again, a scholar that a lot of atheists, um, I'm sorry, a lot of Muslims like to quote. He's an agnostic scholar and scholar in the New Testament. In fact, we interviewed him on the show a while back. Well, anyways, Muslims often appeal to him to say, ah, you see how corrupt the New Testament is or this or that. Well, it's interesting that Bart Ehrman is emphatic in his writings that the Gospels do claim that Jesus is divine. And the earliest Christians, including the apostles, did believe Jesus is divine. That is a major blow to the Quran, which would have us believe that Jesus preached a message that he wasn't divine and that Christians just corrupted that message. Well, that's not the case. Textually speaking, Mark is really early. It's written within decades of these events. And there's no pushback saying, oh, well, there's been manuscript corruptions and all that. No, he acknowledges that the apostles and earliest Christians believed Jesus was divine. Now, what's interesting also is that um, Bart Ehrman gave a talk uh, a while back where he was asserting over and over and over that Mark doesn't see Jesus as divine. And, and my friend, Dr. Petrie, was there. There's videos of this on the internet. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Maybe I'll pull it up here in a second if y'all want to see it. Let me know in the chat if you want to see it. But uh, it, it's pretty interesting. Dr. Petrie comes up at, during the Q&A part and just asks, you know, so you've been saying the whole time, you know, that Mark doesn't see him as a divine figure. But what do you do with Mark too? And it's so interesting <laughs> because eventually Bart Ehrman concedes, yeah, okay. Mark does see him as divine, but we don't know if Mark really wrote that kind of stuff, you know, but the, the, the author of this document, which we call Mark actually does, um, identify him as divine. But what's, what's interesting is elsewhere. He does admit, um, that the gospels identify him as divine. And so, um, I thought that that was interesting and you, and you don't tend to hear that from the Muslim, apologists let me pull it up real quick just so y'all can see it um let's see let's see yeah i think this is it okay let me share my screen If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Whoa. That's in the Gospel of John. Jesus repeatedly makes divine claims for himself. And here's a striking fact. And, and Muslims, you have to grapple with that. Now you have an agnostic scholar saying that Jesus makes divine claims about himself in the Gospel of John. You have to engage that. And you have to explain then how the Quran can make sense of such things and i've i've seen some explanations before but they're always left wanting factoid he never does so in matthew mark or luke okay all right now he says he never does so in matthew mark or luke that's again an interesting claim watch this this final question yeah my question is about the charge of so that's dr petrie right here blasphemy in mark in particular in mark 14 and it's for dr airman but uh, i'd like to hear what both of you think so I thought I heard you saying that Jesus doesn't claim to be divine in the earlier Gospels, in particular in the Gospel of Mark, and yet we were just looking at um, the account of the trial before Caiaphas, where Caiaphas asked him, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? He says, I am, and you'll see the Son of Man to the right hand of power and come in the cause of glory. And then they charge him with blasphemy. He's quoting there Psalm 110 and Daniel 7. So, And that's what I was referring to earlier whenever I spoke of the Son of Man being a divine figure in Daniel. My question is, I, I just want to be clear, is Jesus claiming to be divine there? If he's not, then why do they charge him with blasphemy in the context of a question about his identity? Yeah. And second, why does he quote Psalm 110 in Mark? I'm sorry, well, this is part of the same question because it ties into preexistence. In Mark 12 and Mark 14, he quotes Psalm 110, which is the one psalm in the Old Testament that says, before the day star, I have begotten you. So isn't implicit pre-existence there. So 
two questions uh, in one, I hope, sorry. <laughs> My main question is, is he <laughs> making a divine claim there? And if not, why the blasphemy charge? Is that... <laughs> well, no, it's a complicated question. And it really would take, I mean, for a detailed exegesis, it obviously take a very long time to do. I think it's one of the more confusing passages in the Gospel of Mark, because technically speaking, Jesus does not commit a blasphemy. Um, the, the, uh, the chief priest asks him, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed? And Jesus says, I am. Now, that's not a blasphemy. He's saying, yes, I am the Messiah. There's no blasphemy claiming to be the Messiah. Messiah is just a, the future king of Israel. And so that's not a blasphemy. And then he says, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. So uh, that's not a blasphemy. That's just, that's just referring to Daniel, that you're going to see what Daniel predicted in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. But then they cry out, blasphemy. So what's the blasphemy? So uh, there are a number of theories about this. One theory that I don't accept is that when Jesus says, I am, he's claiming the divine name for himself. I don't think so, because the word I am simply means yes. And yet elsewhere, airmen will explicitly say, as we saw, that John does at least identify Jesus as a divine figure. Are you the Messiah? Yes, uh, I am the Messiah. It's not claiming the divine name. It's just how you say yes. Um, so I see a lot of um, Muslim trolls have entered the chat recently because of Father Hilari and Heggie's uh, conversion. Let me just comment on that and then respond to this troll in the chat. Um, so I disabled the comments on there, not because I'm afraid somehow of Muslims commenting. Actually, my concern, which you can see in that video, was I know that some Christians were going to condemn Father Hilarion whenever uh, he converted to Islam. And whenever Father Hilarion comes to his senses and wants to repent and return to Christianity, I don't want him to be remembered or reminded of all the Christians who condemned him and feel like, oh, I can't return. So that's why I disabled it as a to to spare him of all of the mean people who are going to give nasty comments and attack him not thinking of the fact that they need to be calling him back to repentance need to welcome him back to the church with opening arms rather than shunning him and condemning him that's why i disable the comments not because of somehow i'm afraid of muslims um now there's a troll here saying i'm a muslim may i ask why you have never had a discussion or debate with muslims please um are you serious? Are, are you kidding me? Have you ever looked at my playlist? Have you looked at my debate playlist? Most of the debates that we've had on this channel have been with Muslims. I've debated Muslims myself, Dr. Shabir Ali. What are you talking about? This is why I say this is obviously a troll. So blocking the troll. If you don't have the integrity to simply look at my channel to see if I've had any debates with Muslims, don't accuse me of not having debate with Muslims. Just saying. Okay, let's continue. So then, if that's not the blasphemy, what is the blasphemy? I think you have to understand that for Mark, for Mark himself, the author of this gospel, Jesus is the Son of Man. Jesus is coming back in glory. Jesus has been exalted to the right hand of God and he's coming back as the judge of the earth. It's not that some anonymous son of man is coming. Jesus is coming. Mark thinks that's what Jesus that Mark thinks that's what Jesus is. So when Jesus says you will see the son of man, Mark requires you to think Jesus is the son of man. The high priest knows that he thinks that and so the high priest thinks he's claiming to be the son of man. And so he calls out blasphemy. So is it a divine claim? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, it is. Yeah, kind of. But it's not like Jesus saying, I and the Father are one. Yeah, and in my and I, and I forgot he was talking about the trial of um the trial of Jesus rather than the Mark II part. But but I think the point, however, remains that Jesus clearly is accused of blasphemy there, and obviously in Mark II still accepts that and wants to deliberately demonstrate that he's divine. But also here with his trial, yes, there there's that point as well, which Aramin is admitting, yeah, the author of Mark here. Um, is making the claim that he's a divine figure. He just doesn't believe that Mark actually wrote it. That's his thing. Sorry, I'm out of time. Pardon me? It's the ambition of Mark. 
Yes, of course it's the invention of Mark. It's the invention of Mark. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's not this. It, look, we don't know. There, there's no way we know what happened at the trial of Jesus before. There he goes. Caiaphas. This is this is Mark's. No way we know what happened at the trial of Jesus before Caiaphas. This is this is Mark's account. So I'm I'm talking about the historical Jesus. We don't know what happened at the trial before Caiaphas. How would we know that? The oh, but wait. <laughs> All right. So, but what are the good reasons for believing that Mark is not accurately attesting historically to what happened at the trial? That, that would be the question. But at the very least, the Gospels themselves, by his own admission, do attest to him being divine. Now, what did we see from the Quran? For the Quran, it tells us to go to the Gospels. Well, we go to the Gospels, and this is what it tells us. So that tells us that the Quran is in air. And so it tells us to hold fast to the truth. Okay, well, we are holding fast to the truth. We're going to stick with the Trinity and reject what the Quran is saying. I mean, Jesus would have known. I'm stopping now. <laughs> Anyways, I thought that that was, that was classic, that he had to walk back his comments there because of Dr. Petrie. And anyways, um, anyways, uh, like I said, I hope this has been helpful. If so, let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Be happy to do them. I'm going to be having uh, Louis Dizon back on the show here. Uh, in a few weeks, who will be talking about some issues related to Islam. So you'll certainly look forward to that. We, of course, have an Islam playlist where you can go and see uh, all kinds of videos where we've engaged it. So if that is of interest to you, certainly go and check it out. Of course, there's the debate playlist where we've had many different debates on uh, topics related to Islam. And my debate with Dr. Shabir Ali on whether or not uh, Jesus is divine in the New Testament I take, obviously, the affirmative. He takes the negative, so certainly go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. In fact, I'll put it in the show notes if you want to uh, have a quick link to it. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. God bless.